Okay, so check this out. Way back in 1895, the Hartford Republican published a list of like old rural superstitions that they had collected from a woman who was living in Vermont at the time. And I've read through that whole list now, and one of my favorite entries in the article says that if you drop a pair of scissors and like one blade kind of sticks into the ground, then a stranger is gonna come and visit you from whatever direction that second loose blade is pointing. So I thought I would come out here and give that myth a test, you know, uh, see if there's any truth to the superstition. So I got my scissors here and I'm just gonna go ahead and walk behind the camera so we can get a nice clear shot. And let's just line these up and give them a drop. And all right, there we go. And, and oh my God, there's a stranger. It's true, the superstition's true. Old superstitions are a lot of fun, right? I mean, they're cool and interesting and they're just kind of like this fun little cultural window into how some people used to think, right? Like uh, that Vermont woman who was the subject of the article, you can be sure that she never in her life slept on her stomach because according to her, that was a surefire way to die by drowning later in your life. Like somehow those two things were connected. <laughs> and if her foot ever fell asleep, then she would just like wet her finger and then draw a cross on her foot and boom, problem solved. <laughs> and if she ever spotted like a, a big pile of empty barrels laying around somewhere, then she could be dang sure that it was about to rain. <laughs> Yeah, I think this stuff is just uh, so much fun to go through. So today, I wanted to put you to the test, you know? Give you a challenge. See uh, how up to snuff your superstition knowledge is. So I'm going to challenge you to a jinx contest. <laughs> or more specifically, the Boston Globe is going to challenge you to a jinx contest from all the way back in 1935. Whew. All right, all right. What we got here is a newspaper contest, a fun little relic of the past that I just kind of like stumbled upon while I was doing research for a larger video on New England superstitions. So the Boston Globe back in 1935, they ran this little like game series where every week they would print a cartoon and then ask the readers to mail in answers guessing what famous superstition the cartoon was supposed to represent. So this cartoon, for example, entry number two, the answer is pretty obvious, right? I'm sure that most of you have heard that walking under a ladder is supposed to earn you some bad luck. Or, or here's another pretty easy one, another good example. Number seven, I'm sure most of you know that if you spill some salt, you're supposed to pinch a little of it in your fingers and chuck it over your shoulder. Everybody knows that one. <laughs> So the Globe, they ran 50 of these cartoons over almost a month long period and then asked everybody to write in and mail in all 50 answers in hopes of earning some of the money from the $3,000 prize pool that the Globe was offering up, which is like $65,000 in today's money. <laughs> so, you know, I thought it would be fun to kind of revive the challenge a bit today, you know? I'm gonna show you a few of these cartoons and see if you're up to snuff on your old-timey superstitions. <laughs> but I can't promise to give you $65,000 no matter how good you do, sorry. So how about we start things off with another pretty easy one just to kind of get you warmed up to the format. So this is cartoon number four, printed on April 3rd of 1935. Which superstition do you think this cartoon is meant to represent? Let me give you a second to think about it. Okay, time's up. I'm sure that most of you were correct here. You knew it as soon as you saw it. We got a broken mirror in the corner and a dude just frantically flipping through the calendar, trying to figure out when the seven years of bad luck that he just earned himself are gonna run out. Cause as I'm sure most of you already knew, breaking a mirror earns you seven years of bad luck. <laughs> but all right, I'm sick of these easy ones. Why don't we move on to some of the later cartoons? And, and let me just warn you ahead of time, if you can guess even like one or two of these next few correctly, then I'm gonna consider you a superstition superstar because these little bits of folk wisdom are, are things that basically nobody has ever heard of today in their entire lives. <laughs> so let's just jump up to cartoon number 11 and you'll see what I mean. What do you think is going on here? All right, so what we got here is a man with a hurt foot 
who is tapping a rock with his hand. And there's papers blown all over the road, and there's a streetcar speeding away in the distance. And what the Boston Globe wanted you to glean from this whole scene is that the man tripped over that rock while he was running to get the streetcar and his papers went everywhere. And now he's going back to touch the rock with his hand. Because as everybody knows, whenever you trip over a rock, you're supposed to go touch it with your hand. Cause that's good luck. <laughs> See what I mean about these being obscure? And it's not gonna get any easier either. Cause now we got cartoon number 12. That woman there is very upset about something, but why? Why don't you go ahead and think about it? And the answer is that those guys are playing cards without a tablecloth, which is surefire bad luck. Thank God they got that woman looking out for them there. She's bringing them that tablecloth, and she is staving off the misfortune that they are unwittingly inviting. We all need somebody like that woman in our lives to watch out for us. I'm not going to use that take. (laughs) All right, cartoon number 13. Here's one that you might actually get. Why, oh, why is that guy so hesitant to sit down at the table? I bet you can figure out if you really, really think about it and really, really look at that cartoon. All right, if you didn't get it, let me help you out. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen people about to sit down at that table. Doing that is a one way ticket to getting someone killed, and that guy knows it. You never set thirteen at one table, and that dude is terrified of being in that thirteenth seat. No matter how much the hostess drags him and begs him to sit his keister down in that spot. Number 23, take a gander. Let me see what you think. All right, time's up. So this is actually the first cartoon that the Boston Globe mentions as being especially tricky, as as if the other ones were all super easy, right? (laughs) Apparently, a lot of readers guessed that the superstition in question for this cartoon was something along the lines of, if you see a star fall, expect a death in the family. But the Globe didn't actually accept that as an answer because what they were looking for was if a star falls and you all look, one of your family will be married soon. (laughs) And according to them, you were supposed to tell the difference between those two superstitions solely because of that proud-looking mother-in-law there. (laughs) You know, she is beaming, and she is ready to see her daughter married, and she is apparently the difference between this cartoon representing a good omen and a bad omen. (laughs) I guess the Globe just really wanted their readers to earn those $3,000, right? All right, next up, here is another one that seems pretty much just like intentionally designed to trick you. Cartoon number 24, let's see what you think. We got a whole lot of people making weird faces here and a whole lot of stuff on the table. Get yourself an eyeful and think about it. All right, so here's the trick on this one. A lot of readers wrote in that the cartoon is supposed to represent uh, like an old superstition about dunking bread into coffee. Because according to old folk wisdom, any woman that does that is destined to die alone having never been married. <laughs> but, but the trick, and this is pretty dastardly, is if you zoom in real, real close, you can see that that woman already has a wedding ring on. She's already married. So therefore, dunking bread into coffee superstitions don't apply to her. She's already married. She's not going to die an old maid. (laughs) Pretty crazy, right? Like you're supposed to notice that tiny little splotch of black ink to avoid making the wrong guess. (laughs) The real answer here actually has nothing to do with that woman. It's about the guy in the back. The correct superstition that the Globe was looking for states that taking the second to last biscuit will lead you towards misfortune and loneliness. (laughs) So that's why this guy is like, oh, whoa, no way, I'm not taking that biscuit. And this lady's like, ha ha, you're gonna die alone if you take that biscuit, (laughs) ha ha. All right, let's move on up to number 32. I bet you can guess this one without having ever heard of this superstition before. Go ahead and think about it. 
Okay, this one's pretty obvious. You should never play cards with a cross-eyed man because he will always kick your butt. <laughs> to be honest, I just kind of wanted to include this one because I just love the cartoon. Like, like, <laughs> like just look at cross-eyed stew there, just absolutely taking him to the cleaners. Here's another kind of easy one, number 37. Why don't you take a look at this? Okay, so as everybody knows, if you get a bump or a scrape or a bruise or a cut or whatever, then all you need is someone to kiss it better and poof, the pain will be gone. <laughs> I really just wanted to include this one because the, the, the like answer key that the Boston Globe published for all these cartoons, <laughs> it specifically mentioned that a bunch of male readers wrote into the paper to complain <laughs> that the wife here was clobbering her husband with a rolling pin and then getting away with it because she's giving him a kiss to make it feel better. <laughs> Here's another one that I'm putting in the video just because I kind of like the picture. Number 38, what do you think is going on here? Okay, that's it. What we got here is a big guy forcing a little guy to walk backwards because the little guy just stepped in the big guy's footprints, which is bad luck for the big guy. And the only way to undo the spell is to have the little guy walk backwards through the big guy's footprints. <laughs> I just love imagining this scene happening in real life, right? Like, like imagine you're just walking along, minding your own business, and you accidentally step in someone's footprints. And then the next thing you know, they got a hand wrapped around their around your neck and they're forcing you backwards down the road, frantically trying to undo all that bad luck that you just cast upon them. All right, let's bang out these last few. We got number 40 here, and I just love how weirdly specific this one is. See if you can guess what's going on. All right, so this is a dude that is sharpening his knife on the side of the road, which is summoning a storm. <laughs> because sharpening your knife on the side of the road is a surefire way to get a tempest to come rolling on through. <laughs> All right, here's another trick one with about a billion different things going on. Number 42. Let's see what you think. Okay, so as you might have guessed, this one also garnered a whole bunch of wrong answers from readers. Like, one of the most common ones was this superstition. To shiver without apparent cause is a sign that one is in love. You know, because we got that woman sitting on the couch and she's shivering, right? <laughs> but the trick with this one is that the Boston Globe made sure to draw an open window so that the woman here isn't actually shivering without cause, right? She's shivering because the window is open. So that is the wrong superstition. Get that out of there. <laughs> and in fact, the correct superstition doesn't have anything to do with the window or the shivering woman or those gossiping ladies up there or the black cat or this guy getting the chair pulled out from underneath him. Like all that stuff was just added completely as a bunch of red herrings meant to throw you off. What you were supposed to be looking for here is the fire because as everybody knows, the fire burning on one side of the grate indicates a wedding. <laughs> so we got our fire burning on one side of the fireplace here and our couple that's supposedly gonna get married now sitting right there in front of it. And you know they're gonna get married because of those hearts that the globe drew above the guy. So they're in love and the fire's burning on one side Obviously that means a wedding's coming, right? All right, last one we're gonna talk about in this video. Number 44, what do you think is going on here? Okay, that's time. This one is just a little bit sad and a little bit melancholy and a little bit depressing because what do we got here is a woman, a girl who's just had her sweetheart taken away from her. And how does she know that? Well, it's obvious if you know where to look. The pin on her apron has just come undone. And that is a clear sign that her sweetheart has just been whisked away from her. But if she doesn't want to rely on that pin superstition, then she could always also just look out the window because there they are right in front of her. <laughs> All right, that's all for this one. In case you were wondering, once all the votes were tallied, the winner of the contest was a school teacher named Eleanor D. Huff from Hudson, Massachusetts. Here she is accepting her grand prize of over $500. Great job there, Eleanor. Lord knows I couldn't have done any better. <laughs> Thanks for the fun. Thanks for watching. 
I'll see you next time.